Okay, so good afternoon everyone. I'm Roelio Golish Jr. I'm honored to present the Minda Sales Research Output entitled GIS Mapping of Biomass Energy Potential and Resource Assessment of Five Major Crops in Mindanao. So for my topic outline, so I'll present the project background of Minda Sales and then the Minda Sales project components and that GIS mapping of biomass, energy potential, and resource assessment of five major crops in Mindanao. So what is Mindanao Clean Energy Living Laboratories? Mindanao Cells focuses on the development of a sustainable knowledge management system for more relevant policy making and program interventions in relation to sustainable, low carbon, renewable energy, efficiency of energy systems, and energy access. The Mindanao Clean Energy Living Laboratories project is expected to advance understanding the context of Mindanao so that the challenges and opportunities for low carbon, renewable energy development, energy efficiency, and energy access are identified and analyzed. Access to Sustainable Energy Program, Clean Energy Living Laboratories, or ASEP cell, is our main uh, research uh, program. This is a think tank funded by the European Union. It is being implemented by Ateneo School of Government and in partnership with Manila Observatory, International Council of Local Environment Initiatives, Local Governments for Sustainability, Southeast Asia Secretariat, Xavier University and University of San Carlos. The general objective of the project is to increase the awareness and knowledge on rural electrification, energy efficiency, and renewable energy through the creation of the National Center of Excellence for Sustainable Energy for All. And the Sustainable Development Goal is DG number seven. For the Luzon cell, uh, this was uh, headed by Ateneo de Manila University. And for the Visaya cell, uh, headed by University of San Carlos, and for Mindanao cell, headed by Xavier University. The main benefit, benefits of this project will be understanding the factors that drive the energy market at the local government level and assessment of an optimal mix of energy generation technologies in terms of energy security. Minda Cells project have components, uh, uh, three components. So for component number one, this is for GIS mapping and its EVR. For component two, socioeconomic profiling and case studies. And component three is algorithm modeling and optimization for hybrid renewable energy sources. And also the creation of energy transition and sustainability hub at Xavier University. The overall strategy of this project consists of bringing together small groups of researchers subject matter experts, and stakeholders in a variety of activities. Activities will primarily focus on the analysis of key aspects of the current and future fossil-based and renewable energy supply chains, combined with population, urbanization, hydrologic, topographic, and surface meteorological characteristics of Mindanao. So for component one, uh, this is for the GIS mapping and its VR. So the effort will be spent in identifying relevant secondary data sources related to each of the fossil-based and renewable energy sectors. Data on the locations of renewable like hydro, solar, wind, biomass, geothermal installations will be also be collected, mapped, and analyzed. A data bank will be formed from which information will be, will be called and used to map the characteristics and to profile the energy status of Mindanao vis-a-vis -vis the energy efficiency of and energy access to fossil-based and renewable energy. So for the GIS mapping of biomass, energy potential, and resource assessment on five major uh, crops in Mindanao. So this presentation was uh, called from the study entitled Biomass Energy Potential of Mindanao. And this uh, was authored by Engineer Jesa Balagtas, Engineer Jefferson Valente, and myself.
Mindanao is the second largest island of the Philippines with a total land area of 102,000 kilometers, composed of six regions, 33 cities, and 23 provinces. The Department of Energy has awarded 65 biomass power plant projects last March 2020. Of these, 23 biomass power plants are already supplying 363 megawatt, which is about 1.4% of the country's total capacity mix. Other biomass power plants are still under developmental stages. In Mindanao, five out of 88 power plants operates on biomass. These power plants are located in central and southern portion of the island. Mindanao is a fast-growing island in the Philippines in terms of agriculture and industry. Biomass energy is a potential clean and sustainable alternative energy source. There is currently no available data on Mindanao's biomass energy potential and the location of the various residues for biomass processing. The economics of energy system vary depending on the technology applied for energy generation. While supply and demand are predictably the key contributing factors that drive the energy market. Weather forecast and actual weather events, generation changes in government regulations also contribute to the challenges of forecasting energy prices. A detailed database of evidence will be drawn up for each case. Although the primary foci is on renewable energy in Mindanao, some aspects of the renewable energy sector are relatively underdeveloped. Consequently, energy case studies that have already been completed will be complied as benchmarks or exemplars. So these are the uh, political map of Mindanao uh, having uh, specific regions. So the main objective of this study is to conduct a biomass resource assessment in Mindanao and analyze it using a graphical information system and remote sensing. The results of the study will potentially benefit the agricultural sector in addressing traditional agricultural practices involving burning of crop residues in the field that contributes to air pollution. Further processing the residues into energy policy adds revenue to the farmers. This study on the available biomass resources on Mindanao would allow the island to attract potential investors to build biomass power plants. This study also aims to provide information to the scientific community about Mindanao's biomass energy potential. So we use the uh, mapping technologies, remote sensing platforms for biomass in Mindanao. So the mapping component under project one is aimed to provide geospatial analysis and data. The biomass resource map aims to assist the local government in land use planning and determining whether biomass energy generation could be harnessed and eventually be put up in their community. Above all, the country will benefit from this study in terms of promoting biomass-based power generation to attain sustainable development. Geospatial data will be in the form of both spatial GIS format maps and data. In a spatial data uh, that is tabulated energy sources and paper maps which can then be digitalized and geo-referenced. For the conceptual framework, to assess the viability of installing the biomass power plant, it is important to determine the availability of biomass by quantifying the volume of target materials and the energy that may be produced. So we have gathered information from crop type, production volume, location, and process to, us, to GIS, and then uh, we analyze the biomass resource assessment mapping and the uh, energy potential. So we use the remote uh, sensing and land use mapping using uh, satellite images and some data taken from the provincial agriculture department. So since Mindanao is the largest 
uh, contributor of agricultural products in the country, mainly in crops as presented in the figure. The increasing agricultural productivity of Mindanao would increase the amount of residues that could be used as feedstock for biomass power plant. So Mindanao's agricultural area of approximately 4.1 million hectares account for 30% of the total land area of Mindanao. So there are 10 major crops of Mindanao based on the volume of production as shown. So we have uh, banana, coconut, sugarcane, palay, corn, pineapple, cassava, mango, palm oil, and rubber. So the highest, we uh, took five highest crop and then we analyze. So using the mapping technologies, uh, remote sensing platform for biomass, uh, we follow the uh, study methodology implemented by Morato et al. in 2019 in generating the biomass resource map. Two data sets, uh, volumes of crop production and land use maps was used to generate biomass distribution map as shown in the figure. So first we have the map uh, illustrates the average volume of banana crop production in metric tons. Next, the illustrate the average volume of coconut production in metric tons in the in Mindanao. Next, the corn uh, average uh, volume of corn crop production in metric tons. Then the palay uh, production in metric tons. And then the sugarcane uh, production and metric tons. Then we have uh, to understand the five major crops and its energy potential using GIS uh, technology. So we uh, convert uh, the uh, biomass residue to uh, possible potential for energy conversion. So the map illustrate the estimated potential of banana residue in megawatt where Dabao de Oro has the highest energy potential with an estimated of 238 megawatt followed by Bukidnon, Dabao Oriental, and Dabao del Norte. For coconut, uh, biomass energy potential of coconut residue, so the highest uh, energy potential in Dabao Occidental with an estimated 92 megawatt, followed by Sambuanga del Norte, Dabao del Norte, and Sambuanga Sibugay. For the corn, the highest energy potential is located in Bukidnon with an estimated uh, 14 megawatt energy uh, potential, followed by Maguindanao, North Cotabato, and Lanao del Sur. For the Palay residue, uh, the highest energy potential is located in North Cotabato with an estimated 132 megawatt, followed by Sultan Kodarat, Bukidnon, and Maguindanao. And for the sugar cane, energy potential, the highest is located in Bukidnon with an estimated 160 megawatt, followed by North Cotabato and Dabao del Norte. So for the quantification of biomass of these five major crops, in summary, so it shows that Dabao region has an estimated of 2.7 million metric tons of crop production followed by Northern Mindanao with an estimated of 2.3 million metric tons, then Soxargen uh, with an estimated of 1.8 million metric tons followed by Sambuanga Peninsula with 
one million metric tons, uh, followed by Barn with one point one million metric tons, and Karaga region with seven hundred fifty two metric tons. And for the biomass energy potential using the five major crops, it shows that Dabao region has the highest energy potential and in and is estimated of about 969 megawatt, followed by Northern Mindanao with an estimated 840 megawatt, Soxargen with an estimate of 674 megawatt, Sambuanga Peninsula with an estimate of 407 megawatt, Barm with an estimated 400 megawatt, and Karaga region of 268 megawatt. So the, the result shows that Mindanao has an estimated of 7.7 .7 terawatt hour of biomass energy potential. It has the capacity to offset an estimate of 81% of its coal consumption in 2019 to generate electricity and biomass be fully utilized. These values translate to potentially an estimate of 890 megawatt of capacity that can be added to the grid at full biomass utilization, which is about 23% of the dependable generating capacity of Mindanao in 2019. The province of Bukidnon has the highest volume of biomass residue available for energy production with a total of 1.2 million metric tons biomass energy potential with 120 megawatt, assuming 25% of plant efficiency. Main biomass resource identified are banana, palay, and coconut. These resources may be used as substitute for coal in the future. Bukidnon, Dabao del Norte, and Cotabato are areas of interest for biomass energy generation. And uh, thank you very much.